Hey guys, today I'll show you a mystery horror TV series named Outer Range Season 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins with an old man, Royal, a ranch owner in Wyoming who inspects his beloved ranch every early morning, only starting his day after ensuring all his livestock are safe and sound. One evening, he hears his Ferrari horses in their pen becoming restless. As he goes to calm them, he observes many birds darting out of the distant woods, as if startled by something. The next morning, while counting the livestock with his eldest son, they find two missing. Assuming there's a hole in the ranch fence, Royal goes to investigate along with his two sons. At the edge of the ranch, they encounter three men who are the sons of Wayne, the owner of the neighboring farm. Wayne's power and status greatly overshadow Royal's, and they've coveted his ranch for a long time, seeking to force Royal to give it up through official harassment. This time, they hand him a legal document for illegal land occupation. But Royal is unfazed by their tactics. He tells his sons to ignore it and focus on finding the hole in the fence. As Royal walks and surveys the area, he quickly notices something unusual about the new ranch. Rushing over, he is stunned speechless by the sight that greets him, a massive sinkhole right before his eyes. He is certain there was nothing there the day before. He tests the depth of the hole with a stone, finding it seemingly bottomless, with tiny particles floating within. With curiosity piqued, Royal reaches in, only to experience a sudden illusion. He sees his wife is asking him to greet someone. Alarmed, he withdraws his hand and the illusion immediately immediately dissipates, as does the shadow that had just appeared. Unable to explain this, Royal composes himself and decides to head home. Before he can even enter his house, he spots a police car parked outside. Curious, he goes to inquire and sees his wife standing outside their living room, asking him to greet the town's sheriff inside. Anxiety creeps in. This was the scene he saw in the sinkhole. He barely has time to ponder the coincidence because the sheriff brings grim news. It turned out that Royal's daughter-in-law, who disappeared nine months ago, remains untraceable, and the police are preparing to give up the search. His eldest son, Perry, is heartbroken. He believes his wife would never leave voluntarily, especially since they have an eight-year-old child. The next morning, Royal heads directly to the sinkhole. Unfortunately, it hasn't moved an inch. If he doesn't devise a solution soon, the cattle grazing on the western ranch are likely to vanish. He tries to fill the pit, but it's a futile effort. His attempt to cover it with a tarp proves useless as well. Frustrated, Royal throws something into it. Suddenly, a massive bull appears out of nowhere with two arrows sticking out of its body. It seems to jog his memory, and he rides to the edge of the ranch. Here, a woman named Autumn is camping. She arrived the day before and paid Royal to camp on his ranch for a few days. Now, with the appearance of the sinkhole, Royal warns her not to wander around aimlessly or she would have to leave the ranch. Without hesitation, Autumn agrees. It's clear she has fallen in love with the place and even expresses her desire to buy the ranch, naming her price. Of course, Royal would never agree since the ranch has been passed down from his wife's ancestors. However, it is apparent that this woman's purpose for being here is not so simple. Nightfall descends. Inside her tent, Autumn draws strange symbols in her notebook. Royal, however, is facing new trouble. Just as he's preparing for bed, he hears the urgent roar of a car engine outside. Curious, he steps out and opens the garage door to find his two sons standing there, looking panicked, with a body in the car. It's then revealed that after finding out the search for his missing wife was hopeless, Perry had been in low spirits all day. His younger brother, Rhett, took him out to the local town bar to get his mind off things. When the two had drunk enough, Rhett went to fetch the car, leaving Perry at the bar entrance. There, he ran into the sons of the neighboring farm owner who had tried to take over their ranch. Angered, Perry started a fight. Perhaps it was the alcohol, but Perry didn't hold back his punches. By the time Rhett arrived with the car, Perry had killed one of the farmer's sons. Panicked, the two brothers loaded the body into the car, unsure whether to go to the hospital or call the police. In the end, they decided to go home first. After their father, Royal, got wind of the situation, he felt compelled to hide the truth, afraid that Perry would end up in prison and they would lose the ranch. He instructed his sons to clean the car and themselves and not to mention the incident to anyone. As for the body, he had a plan to throw it into the giant sinkhole where no one would find any clue. Suddenly, a bolt of thunder echoed in the sky as the body fell from the horse's back. Surprised, Royal dismounted to pick up the body, but the Ferrari horse was spooked and ran off. He had no choice but to drag the body towards the sinkhole. His clothes got caught on the fence, but without a second thought, he took them off and continued his trek. 
He finally reached the pit and with all his strength, he threw the body in. As he watched the body disappear, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. Suddenly, a light shone from behind. It was Autumn, who had been camping on the ranch. She had discovered the sinkhole earlier and had been investigating it. She called it a hole cut by the god of time, dividing the world into known and unknown parts, a great miracle of the world. Upon learning that only Royal and herself knew about the sinkhole, Autumn showed an excited expression and suddenly pushed Royal into it. Meanwhile, the other two sons of the neighboring farmer arrived at Royal's house. They had found their brother's bloodied belt buckle outside the bar and heard about the fight with Royal's son. They came looking for answers, but met Royal's strong-willed wife, who managed to send them away without any evidence to follow. However, she and her children were worried, wondering why Royal hadn't returned yet. As dawn broke, Royal appeared at the door, expressionless, limping. He put on his clothes and refused to talk about the previous night's events. He simply asked everyone to carry on as usual. His wife was curious about the gunshot wound on his leg and asked who had done it. Royal was also puzzled. Last night, he had been pushed into the pit by Autumn, but when he woke up, he found himself in the middle of the ranch. The Ferrari horse that had run away was even by his side. As for what had happened in between, it was so bizarre that Royal didn't even dare to think about it. While he was pondering, his wife came running over, shouting that the neighboring farmer Wayne had called through his lawyer. He wanted to reclaim part of the ranch land. After hearing this, Royal decided to meet this greedy man. However, Royal could not have anticipated that the person he was dealing with was a critically ill old man, breathing through a machine just to stay alive. Despite his physical condition, the old man seemed spirited, not showing any signs of distress over his missing youngest son. He simply assumed that the boy was off causing trouble somewhere. Royal decided to cut to the chase, tentatively offering the eastern pasture as a negotiation point. However, Wayne was insistent on wanting the western pasture. Royal got alert because the inexplicable giant sinkhole was located in the western pasture. He wondered if Wayne had been aware of something. Wayne then admitted that he was naturally drawn to mysterious things, and Royal's western pasture had exactly what he wanted. These words only strengthened Royal's suspicion, and he firmly declared that he would never give up the western pasture. Once again, Royal stood before the giant pit, tossing in the blood-stained vest from the previous night. He silently vowed to uncover the truth about this mysterious entity. At the dinner table, Royal announced to his family that he intended to move the livestock from the western pasture to the eastern. His family was against the idea, as they had just started using the western pasture. However, Royal, being the head of the family, had the final say. He explained about the dangerous sinkhole. Eventually, the entire family worked together to herd the hundreds of cows from the western pasture to the eastern. Suddenly, a calf broke away from the group heading towards the pit. Royal immediately chased after it on his Ferrari, managing to pull the calf back just before it plunged into the pit. It was clear that Royal's decision was right to prevent many cows from falling into the sinkhole. That same night, Royal went into his old house, hoping to find any clues left by his ancestors about the pit. Unexpectedly, the camping girl Autumn reappeared mysteriously. It's then revealed that during the day, she had discovered that the symbols she had been drawing in her notebook were identical to those engraved on the stones of the pasture. She was surprised and puzzled. The little girl, who happened to be playing outside, told her that her grandfather Royal had returned home early in the morning. The strange symbol she recognized was, in fact, the symbol of Royal's ranch. This information shocked Autumn, and she decided to visit Royal that night. She felt as though some unseen force had guided her here. Autumn had completely forgotten her childhood experiences, remembering only symbols similar to the ranches. She was convinced that something special existed here. She reached Royal again and asked him about his experience falling into the sinkhole the previous night. Believing that she might be able to uncover the mystery of the pit, Royal recounted that when he regained consciousness after falling into the pit, he found himself still in the middle of his ranch, but the surroundings had drastically changed. The place was swarming with fully armed soldiers and resource extraction equipment. The town's residents were staring at him in surprise. Only his wife approached him, telling him that the pasture no longer belonged to them and that he had died two years ago. She quietly urged him to run. Then, Wayne's son shot him in the leg and the soldiers charged at him. 
Confused, Royal jumped back into the pit behind him. Now, the mysterious sinkhole seemed to have the power to time travel. The first time Royal encountered it, he saw future visions. And when he fell into it, he witnessed events that would occur two years later. However, how he reappeared remains unknown. Royal was filled with nothing but panic and confusion. He had no idea what kind of impact this pit would have on his family. But at this point, Royal had too much on his plate. His eldest son, Perry, had accidentally killed the son of Wayne. In an attempt to cover up the incident, Royal discarded the body into the sinkhole. Unfortunately, they found the victim's bloody belt buckle at the scene. The sheriff confirmed that the blood on it belonged to Royal's youngest son, Rhett. Rhett was incredibly calm, insisting he had done nothing. He then nonchalantly took part in the town's bull riding competition, astonishingly winning the event. Afterwards, he even had dinner with the girl of his dreams, taking a significant leap in their fishy relationship. But soon happiness turned into sorrow when Rhett was caught urinating in public. Seizing this opportunity, the sheriff began interrogating Rhett again, asking him about his actions on the night of the incident. By asking around the bar, they were sure to find clues. Rhett knew he couldn't keep it hidden, so he admitted to having a physical altercation with the victim, but claimed he left shortly after. Many people at the bar witnessed it, but what Rhett didn't mention was that his brother, in a moment of impulsiveness, had killed one of Wayne's sons. Not long after, Royal came to the police station to bail his son out. On the way home, the father told Rhett to keep quiet about his brother killing Wayne's son. He even did something incredibly daring. He stole the bloody belt buckle from the police station, then went to the sinkhole and threw the only piece of evidence into it. In his mind, the massive pit was a bottomless abyss, capable of swallowing all sins. Unfortunately, Royal was mistaken, and his idea was far from the truth. The next morning, he found Autumn, who was still camping on the ranch, and asked her why she had pushed him into the pit previously. The girl's answer was rather bizarre. She said she was merely curious about what would happen if a human body fell into it. As it turned out, her gamble paid off. Otherwise, no one would have known that the pit could show the future. Then Royal proposed a deal. He wouldn't pursue Autumn's mistake, but she had to keep the secret of the pit. Until Royal figured out its origin, even his own family had to be kept in the dark. Then he noticed a stone hanging around Autumn's neck, which the girl had found in the mountains on the edge of the ranch. As soon as Royal shook hands with her, a miraculous thing happened. The mountain behind them just disappeared. As soon as he let go, the vanished mountain reappeared. Royal, having experienced many strange things in recent days, just left without a surprise. But what Royal didn't know was how much trouble this incident would bring him. The police station had just received reports from eight people claiming that a mountain had vanished out of thin air. The sheriff knew this was not a prank, as she had just witnessed it herself. Still reeling from the shock, she suddenly received another report. A body had been found at the base of the mountain that had just disappeared. The call was made by Royal. Just a few minutes earlier, his granddaughter had been walking around the ranch when she stumbled upon a body at the base of the mountain. It was Wayne's son, who Royal had thrown into the deep pit days before. Realizing he couldn't cover this up anymore, he chose to call the police in hopes of clearing his own name. Led by Royal, the sheriff and her men hurried to the scene. However, they were all curious as to why the body showed no signs of decay. The sheriff then began questioning Royal's family, who she had always suspected. Knowing that Royal's granddaughter wouldn't lie, she told the adults to keep quiet and proceeded to ask the young girl several questions. Eventually, she got a crucial clue from the girl. On the night Wayne's son disappeared, Rhett was not at home. Perry rushed to explain, falsely claiming that Rhett was with a girl at that time, though he wouldn't say who. The elder brother had no choice but to lie. As she was leaving, the sheriff casually tested Royal, asking him if he had seen the mountain disappear or taken anything from the police station. Royal kept a straight face, claiming he hadn't seen anything or taken anything, but the sheriff wasn't easily fooled. She ordered her officers to find Rhett and ask where he had been on the night of the incident. If his story didn't match his brother's, there would surely be a problem. Perry was also aware of this and was constantly calling Rhett at home. But Rhett had left his phone in the car at the time. Seeing the incoming call, he didn't answer and instead went to the bank where his girlfriend worked. Just then, a cop rushed to find Rhett and asked him where he was on the night of the incident. It was then that Rhett realized why his brother was trying to reach him. Despite the cop's objections, he stepped aside to take the call. Following his brother's instructions, he told the cop that he had been with a girl the whole time. But when the cop asked who the girl was, Rhett was at a loss for words. Luckily, his girlfriend reacted quickly, claiming that she was on a date with Rhett at the time. This managed to allay the cop's suspicions. 
Although the storm had temporarily subsided, Royal's family was still worried. They wondered if their father was losing his mind. He had confidently claimed that he would take care of the body, only to dump it at the base of the mountain. But Royal had his own reasons, though he didn't voice them. He himself didn't understand how the body ended up at the mountain's base when he had clearly thrown it into the deep pit. And then the mountain disappeared, only to reappear a while later with the body. To keep his family from worrying and to prevent the secret of the pit from leaking, Royal didn't tell his wife the truth, despite her continuous questioning. He even went back to the base of the mountain to see if he could find the belt buckle he had thrown into the pit. Instead, he found some strange minerals. Considering the stone Autumn was wearing, he suspected that the disappearance of the mountain and the sudden appearance of the pit had something to do with these magical stones. However, before he could figure out the reason, the sheriff's homicide investigation had made significant progress. To everyone's surprise, the sheriff personally approached Rhett's girlfriend, stating that Rhett might be implicated in a murder. Providing a false alibi for a suspect is also illegal, and this could easily be verified as there were many people at the bar at the time. After much persuasion, Rhett's girlfriend finally admitted to lying. Therefore, the sheriff quickly summoned the two brothers to the police station for separate interrogations. There was certainly someone among them who was lying. When their lies were exposed, both brothers were extremely rattled. Fortunately, they didn't admit to killing Wayne's son. Just as they were about to break, Royal appeared again, temporarily bailing them out. Everyone was depressed. If the sheriff continued the investigation, the truth would eventually come out. But just a day later, their murder suspicions were cleared because the autopsy report of the deceased was released. The forensic doctor had never seen such a strange body. The cause of death was a fatal blunt force trauma to the trachea, but the wound was smooth without any traces and metal residues, which was obviously impossible for humans to do. What's more, the autopsy showed that the time when the body was discovered was less than eight hours after the actual death. It had been a full five days since he disappeared from the bar. Even if the royal family couldn't provide an alibi for that day, it wouldn't prove anything. Thus, their murder suspicions were cleared. However, the controversy over this incident did not end. Upon learning of his son's death, Wayne could not help but let out mournful roars like a goose. His ex-wife also flew back from far away to attend their son's funeral. As the next-door neighbors, the royal family had to attend the funeral as well. When Royal's wife asked Wayne why he was always targeting the royal family's western ranch, the malicious old man took out a strange mineral. It was found by one of his workers in the western ranch by accident. The moment Wayne saw it, he recalled his experiences from his childhood. It turned out that he had encountered the mysterious sinkhole long ago. This thrilled the old man who loved to explore strange things. So he vowed to acquire the royal family's western ranch at any cost. His wealthy wife seemed to be aware of the value of this mineral stating that she would provide as much assistance as possible. At this time, Royal was focused on unraveling the secret of the giant pit. He found out that Autumn liked to play cards, so he proposed a wager. If he won, Autumn would have to give up the stone hanging around her neck. As expected, the old man cheated and won the stone. Although he didn't know its use, his intuition told him that the stone was definitely related to the mysterious giant pit. However, he wasn't the only one coveting this matter. Ever since Wayne got the magical mineral, he got to the point where he was so excited that he couldn't sleep. In the end, he couldn't stand it anymore and drove into the royal family's western ranch. After some searching, he finally saw the pit that he had been dreaming about again. Just when Wayne was excited, Royal suddenly appeared and gave him a good beating, but the cunning Wayne faked fainting, eventually attacking Royal from behind and knocking him down. Then he drove away. It's revealed that he had already bribed the surveyor in town and listed a lot of historical data, proving that Royal was not the true owner of the Western Ranch. He even hired a lawyer and planned to hold a hearing at the end of the month. Although Royal was annoyed by this, there was nothing he could do in the face of the law except resort to violence. After knocking Royal down, Wayne excitedly returns home. He had witnessed the mystery of the sinkhole in his childhood and is preparing to make a big move to take it for himself. Suddenly, Wayne collapses. His children quickly call for an ambulance to take him to the hospital. Royal, having been knocked unconscious, wakes up on the grass. He knows the secret of the sinkhole can't be hidden any longer. The wealthy Wayne could come to claim it at any moment. So before dawn, he hurries away from the ranch. He needs to find a solution quickly. However, not much later, Royal's wife hears some noise upstairs. Upon investigating, she finds Autumn surreptitiously looking for something. It turns out that she had previously lost a mineral pendant to Royal and now regrets it, hoping to secretly take it back. 
Unfortunately, she is caught red-handed by Royal's wife and fails to retrieve the pendant. Angry, Autumn cryptically tells Royal's wife that she has noticed Royal has been acting differently and that she doesn't really know her husband at all. Her words strike a chord with Royal's wife, who had repeatedly asked him if something was wrong, only to be met with silence, causing her great stress. Afterwards, Royal arrives at a local university. A few days earlier, he had stolen from Wayne's house a business card belonging to a geology professor. He is now visiting this professor to ask if Wayne had ever invited him to survey his ranch. Royal then pulls out the mineral pendant he had won from Autumn, hoping the professor can identify what it is. The professor takes a careful look and says the pendant is encased in amber. To identify the mineral inside, they would need a spectral laser. While they talk, Royal notices a photo on the wall of the professor with a triangular symbol in the background. It's a symbol he had seen when he fell into the sinkhole. His own ranch was seized and forcefully mined by the company associated with this symbol. Royal quickly asks for the pendant back, determined not to let them discover the secret of the sinkhole. Later, he goes to the library and learns that the symbol belongs to a mining company. Royal tries to call the company to learn more, but no one answers. When he gets back home, he doesn't even greet his wife, heading straight to his workshop. He decides to break open the mineral to see what's inside. Royal places the mysterious stone on a tool and applies some pressure to break the amber. To his surprise, it contains a type of black powder. Curiously, he places some on his hand, which suddenly develops black spots. He then sees a vision of the future where he dies in his wife's arms, with Autumn standing beside. She seems able to see Royal in the real world and says his name. The vision of the future disappears, and the black spots on his hand vanish. Royal is genuinely scared. Regardless of whether his death is related to Autumn, the fact that she could see him in the future vision is extraordinary. So Royal immediately drives to the ranch and quickly finds Autumn near the sinkhole. She asks for the mineral pendant back as soon as she sees him, but Royal says he will return it only after he takes her back to the camp. The two sat in the car without saying a word. The vehicle quickly arrived at the campsite, but Royal didn't slow down, heading straight into the depths of the forest. Autumn sensed something was wrong and yelled out in a chicken voice asking where they were going, but Royal didn't respond or show any signs of stopping. Gathering her courage, Autumn jumped from the moving car. Her legs were severely injured from the fall and she couldn't even stand. At that point, Royal stopped the car and told her that the pendant had been crushed and the stone inside was nothing special. But Autumn didn't believe him. She had found many similar stones in the area and she believed they were somehow connected to the sinkhole and had the power to control time. Royal had realized this too, but his secret being exposed made him unusually irritable. He warned her not to continue exploring the secrets of the sinkhole, especially not to tell his family. But Autumn was stubborn. She believed this was the most significant discovery of the century and asked why it couldn't be made public. Royal lost his patience and, ignoring Autumn's bullshits, drove away, leaving her sexy body alone in the dark. She was deep in the forest with injuries, making it almost impossible to get out. But that wasn't the worst part. Royal returned to Autumn's temporary camp and doused her tent in gasoline, burning all her documentation and research. His actions were no different from arson and manslaughter, but Royal never expected Autumn's resilience. She managed to hobble on a broken tree branch all night. Suddenly, she heard a loud roar and a massive bear appeared. Autumn fell heavily to the ground, trembling and curling up, watching as the beast approached by tracing her smell. She thought she was going to die, but unexpectedly, the bear didn't attack, possibly because she didn't smell good. It seemed to communicate with her with its eyes before leaving. Having narrowly escaped death, Autumn felt this was a sign, strengthening her resolve to make the sinkhole public. Meanwhile, the wealthy businessman Wayne had returned from the hospital. Unexpectedly, he had suffered a stroke. He was now bedridden, unable to eat or move, lying in bed like a living dead. His younger son, Billy, didn't understand what was so special about the stone that had driven his father mad. Wayne's older son, Luke, was much more practical. He was discussing with his mother how to inherit his father's estate. He had no interest in seizing Royal's ranch. His mother reminded him that there might be something important at the ranch, but he insisted that his father must be senile. Their conversation was interrupted by a phone call from Wayne's lawyer. Apparently, their father had a draft will at the lawyer's office, leaving all his estate and company shares to Billy, his younger son. But he had a sudden stroke before he could formally sign the will. Luke was left disappointed at his father's will. His mother tried to comfort him, saying the draft had no legal effect as long as they kept the secret. For some reason, she seemed to favor Luke. 
Perhaps it was because Billy wasn't very responsible. Right at this moment, Billy dressed as a soldier, preparing to hunt a deer in the forest for his father. Just as he was about to shoot an arrow, a person suddenly appeared. It was Autumn, looking ragged and worn. She said she wanted to show Billy something. They quickly left the forest, and before long, they were in front of the sinkhole. Billy was astounded to see that. It seemed the existence of the sinkhole would no longer be a secret. Billy finally understood his father's devotion to the ranch. When Autumn returned to the campsite, all she found were the ashes of her tent and her research materials, with none of her personal belongings remaining. However, the girl was not disheartened. She viewed uncovering the secret of the sinkhole as her divine mission. To demonstrate her resolve, she even carved the emblem of the Western Ranch onto her body. Her first task, however, was to deal with stubborn Royal, who had been trying to cover up the secret of the sinkhole all along. Autumn had a bit of a rapport with Perry. She managed to lure him out and told him how Royal had abandoned her in the forest the night before, a de facto attempted murder. Moreover, she had witnessed Royal throwing the body of Wayne's son into the deep pit. Autumn decided to report all these to the police, and in doing so, let Perry see the ugly face of his father. Perry instantly panicked, hurriedly assuring her that he would handle the matter and pleading with her not to call the police. However, little did she know the person who had actually killed Wayne's son was Perry himself. After Autumn left, Perry, holding an envelope, walked alone towards the police station. In the meantime, Autumn once again found Wayne's younger son, Billy, and told him that the sinkhole could predict the future. Everything that happened here followed a particular pattern, and everything was predestined. At this time, Perry returned home with a deathly pale face. He had gone to the police station and confessed to killing Wayne's son. However, he took all the blame for the disposal of the body involving his brother and his father onto himself. He didn't want his family to be implicated. His brother, Rhett, was furious. They had done so much to protect him, and his self-righteousness had rendered all their efforts in vain. It's no wonder Rhett was angry. During the day, he had mustered the courage to apologize to the girl of his dreams, hoping to mend their relationship. But his girlfriend was still concerned about Rhett and his brother's involvement in the murder case, hoping that her boyfriend could be honest with her. After a long consideration, Rhett, in order to cover up his brother's crime, still denied any involvement. Seeing his attitude, his girlfriend could only turn away in disappointment. It could be said that Rhett had made a sacrifice for his brother, to the extent that even their father sided with him. Perry was on the verge of a breakdown. He grabbed a knife and shouted that all he did was for them, and even if he didn't turn himself in, Autumn would report to the police. Now it was the turn of Royal to get angry, because he had told them to stay away from her, but they wouldn't listen. In the scuffle, he shattered the cabinet glass, which hurt his little granddaughter. Blood quickly seeped from her forehead. It was hard to understand why a family would treat each other like this. The little girl cried and ran out of the house, just in time to see a police car approaching from a distance. Since Perry had shouldered all the responsibility alone, the royal parents couldn't stand by and watch their son serve a prison sentence. So they used most of their savings to bail Perry out, mortgaging their own farm, promising to attend the trial on the designated date. The reason they did this was to allow Perry to reunite with his daughter before he was convicted, and in the meantime, come up with a way to exonerate him as much as possible. However, the royals knew that avoiding imprisonment was extremely difficult because the Wayne family, who had been eyeing the sinkhole on the farm for a long time, would not miss this opportunity. Although Wayne is paralyzed at home, his two sons are not easy to deal with. Billy learned the existence of the sinkhole from Autumn and shared this secret with his elder brother. Luke was also shocked the first time he saw the sinkhole, his eyes full of greed. But the one who truly understood the value of the sinkhole was Billy. He once again found Autumn, proposing the idea of wanting to develop the sinkhole together. He had broken the ore his father had picked up near the sinkhole. The black powder inside was the same as the royals had previously obtained from the pendant. At that time, he only slightly touched some of it and was able to see the future. Billy went even crazier, actually swallowing the black powder and as a result, saw a clearer future. He confidently claimed that Autumn will make a fortune from the sinkhole and become a leader-like figure on Earth. What Billy needs to do now is to cling to her coattails. Autumn, as if she had anticipated this day, reminded Billy to help her eliminate the biggest obstacle at the moment, which is Rory, the owner of the ranch where the sinkhole is located. Without even thinking, Billy nodded in agreement and quickly took action. As if it had been planned ahead, Royal's car suddenly broke down on the way back to the ranch, and Billy happened to drive by and offered him a ride. As a result, Royal got into his car and was quickly taken into an abandoned amusement park. 
Billy pulled out a gun and forced Royal to kneel down, berating him for not being aware of the situation. Feeling threatened, Royal had to shout that he was wrong and swear that he would never harm Autumn in the future. This tactic really worked. Billy actually spared his life and watched him leave. Royal didn't feel lucky because the humiliation made him feel worse than death. But Autumn's plan went beyond this. She sought out Perry alone, claiming she had a monumental secret to share with him. However, the specifics remained a mystery. Maybe it was just a coincidence, but Royal, who had just returned home, also wished to share a secret with Perry. He led his son to the edge of the sinkhole. Before Perry could recover from his shock, Royal began to recount his past. As a child, Royal had gone hunting with his father in the countryside. Instead of bagging an animal, he accidentally killed his father. Young Royal, though still a boy, knew he had caused a catastrophe and couldn't go home to face his mother. He chose to run away. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. A giant black hole suddenly appeared in the field ahead. The boy didn't hesitate and jumped right in. Surprisingly, he didn't die. He crawled out of the black hole alive, only to find another boy standing outside the hole. It's a young Wayne, who would grow up to be a wealthy businessman. Wayne was completely shocked by this sight. The most perplexing part was that Royal had jumped into the sinkhole in 1886, but when he came out, it was 1968. This was impossible to explain scientifically, and so Royal chose to keep it a secret. Perry, though surprised after hearing the story, wasn't moved. He said that Autumn had long known about the secret of the sinkhole's time manipulation and that his wife hadn't really left. After saying this, Perry resolutely jumped into the sinkhole. Then a thick fog rose and the magical sinkhole vanished before Royal's eyes. Autumn watched everything not far away, as if it was all within her expectations. But Royal knew that his eldest son must have been bewitched by Autumn to jump in. He secretly decided to get rid of her no matter what. He didn't care about the promise he made to Billy, grabbed his gun, and drove to the motel where Autumn was temporarily staying. Unfortunately, after searching all the rooms, he couldn't find her. She had anticipated this move and had Billy come to take her away, which made Royal recognize once again how tricky Autumn was. Even his wife felt the pressure of the impending storm because she hadn't been able to contact Perry. If he missed the trial, the farm they had mortgaged would be confiscated. Moreover, they had a big event that night. Rhett was about to participate in a cowboy competition. Even Royal, who was troubled by various matters, had to attend. He was determined to get rid of Autumn, even at the cost of his life. But before that, he had to let his younger son know the secret of the sinkhole on the farm. Rhett, however, wasn't in a good mood. Today was the most important competition of his life, and his father seemed to be not caring at all, only talking about the farm. Annoyed, Rhett said he didn't want to hear anything about the farm. Royal was left speechless and had to return to the audience. But before he could sit down, he received a call from Autumn. She said she was on the streets of the small town, and if he wanted to kill her, he should come right away. Royal knew Autumn might set a trap, but he still left the competition without hesitation. Rhett was about to take the stage, but he saw his father absent even from his final match, which caused him to have a bad feeling. As a result, he underperformed in the competition and dropped to the last rank. Luckily, there was another round that could give him a chance to regain points. Despite the severe pain, Cowboy Rhett pulled himself together and mounted the cow again. However, when he looked towards the audience, he found that even his mother and niece were gone. Just a few minutes before, his niece had left the stands to comfort Rhett, but on her way, she encountered her mother, who had been missing for two years. Seeming to be avoiding some terrifying presence, the woman quickly took her daughter and left the arena. When Royal's wife noticed her granddaughter hadn't returned, she frantically searched, but found no sign of her. She was on the brink of despair, feeling as though she had been abandoned by the heavens. Rhett, about to take the stage, was unaware of these events and felt his family didn't care about him. This, however, fueled his determination, leading to an outstanding performance and clinching the championship. At this moment, Rhett wasn't excited. Instead, he decided to break away from his family and run away with his loved one. Just as the royal family seemed to be falling apart, their old rival Wayne's family wasn't faring any better. Luke, Wayne's son, quietly approached his father's bed and was about to suffocate him with a pillow. Thankfully, his brother Billy arrived just in time to prevent the madness. Luke felt compelled to explain, saying that he had to seize control of the family power quickly to reclaim the royal's ranch. 
Although he didn't understand the exact value of the sinkhole, his intuition told him it must be worth a fortune. However, Billy just told him that the sinkhole had disappeared. Unwilling to accept this, Luke believed the sinkhole was merely buried and went straight to the ranch, digging holes everywhere like a mole. Little did he know his actions would bring significant impact to the world. On the other side of town, the town's sheriff received a report from a farmer about strange animals appearing in his fields. Rushing to investigate, she accidentally discovered a thin line composed of black powder. Following the trail, she found the surrounding trees becoming denser, as if she had traveled through time and space. The sheriff was overwhelmed by the astonishing sight. She was curious where these animals were headed, so she continued along the mountain range. She then saw many primitive houses standing on the distant plain, feeling as excited as if she had discovered a new world. After a day of digging, Luke made a new discovery at the bottom of a deep hole. A black liquid started to seep out. Recognizing it as the precious mineral he was after, Luke was overjoyed. However, his joy was short-lived when he noticed that the black liquid started to seep more and more, until countless wild bulls burst out from the bottom. At the same time, Royal drove to the agreed location. He saw Autumn standing in the middle of the road. Just as he was about to get out of the car, he spotted Billy ambushing him from the rearview mirror. Despite his old age, he jumped back quickly into the car to hide his old body. After a bout of chasing, he even managed to shoot Billy and send him to meet Jesus. Autumn's car overturned on the side of the road. As Royal slowly approached, he saw the already deceased Billy and the seriously injured Autumn. He was about to shoot and end this menace when suddenly he felt the ground start to shake. Royal looked up, only to see many wild bulls rushing towards him like Tesla bikes. He had no choice but to hurriedly take cover under the car. He and his car were tossed around by the charging bulls. Luckily, they came and went quickly, and Royal safely survived this crisis. When he stood up, he saw a wild cow with an arrow stuck in it had not left. Royal had encountered it many times on the ranch, so he approached it to remove the arrow instead of milking the cow. Then he saw Autumn, unconscious not far away. Presumably, she was spared from being trampled because of the protection of this wild cow. Royal walked over to Autumn, intending to check whether she was still alive or already dead as shit. Suddenly, he noticed a scar on her forehead. Recalling his granddaughter, who had an injury in the exact same spot, Royal quickly realized that the woman in front of him was indeed his grown-up granddaughter. Autumn had once mentioned that she couldn't remember her childhood. Plus, Royal himself had experienced time travel, so he quickly accepted this reality. He immediately picked up Autumn and started to walk home. At this time, Royal's wife had already prepared dinner. Unfortunately, she was only greeted by the coming home royal without their two sons. Deep down, she felt that their home was thoroughly shattered. With that, the first season of this drama concludes. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.